Yes, okay. Uh, number one, hydrogen uh, sulfide is an odor causing chemical found at many wastewater collection and treatment facilities. The following expression describes hydrogen uh, sulfide gas reacting with aqueous phase hydrogen sulfide. So we have H2S as a gas uh, is equal to H2S as an aqueous. Use your understanding of chemical equilibrium and thermodynamics to determine the Henry's constant moles per liter atmosphere. For this reaction, uh, at uh, temperature 25 centigrade, the change in free energy of formation at the standard condition, units of kilocalorie per mole are as follows. The H2S uh, as a gas is equal to minus 7.892. H2S uh, in aqueous phase is minus 6.54. HS minus in aqueous is 3.01. And S4, uh, SO4 to minus is minus 177.34. Well, first of all, we should, Gibbs, uh, we should use the Gibbs uh, free energy equation. Here you can see this equation, delta G is equal to delta G zero plus RT ln Q. Delta G is uh, because we are um, evaluating uh, this uh, in equilibrium condition, so delta G is equal to zero. So we have delta G zero plus RT ln uh, Q equal to zero. To find delta G zero, uh, we should um, subtract the summation of products to, uh, from uh, reactants. So the uh, product is minus 6.54 kilocalorie per mole for each mole. And uh, here you can see H2S in aqueous. And uh, minus, minus 7.892 kilocalorie per mole for each mole as a reactants. Uh, it is uh, equal to 1.35 kilocalorie. At equilibrium, uh, the reaction quotient uh, Q is the equilibrium constant Ka. So we can use, instead we can uh, use Ka. And in this case, Henry's constant, uh, we call it Henry's constant, solving for H in the free energy equ equation. So Ka H is equal to E minus delta G zero divided by RT. Uh, we uh, use this formula to find Q and instead of Q, we put cash. We have delta G, we have R, R is uh, constant and we have T uh, in centigrade, we should uh, change it to Kelvin. So adding to uh, 273 uh, and it gives us 0 0.102 mole per wood atmosphere. And so in here we have cash. Uh, next question. The boiling temperatures of chloroform and anesthetic carbon tetrachloride commonly used in the past for dry cleaning and tetrachloroethylene previously used as a de uh, decreasing agent are uh, 61.7 centigrade, uh, 76.5 centigrade and 121 centigrade uh, the boiling point is uh, these numbers respectively. And uh, we know that the vapor pressure of a chemical is directly proportional to the inverse of the chemical's boiling point. If a large quantity of these compounds were spilled in the environment, which compound would, uh, would you predict to have higher concentration in the air above the site? Yes, it's chloroform, chloroform, yeah. It's the one that uh, in the question. Okay. Well, uh, since the vapor pressure of a chemical is directly proportional to the inverse of the chemicals boiling point, so chloroform will have the higher gases concentration because it has the lowest boiling point and higher vapor pressure, as you said. The next question, uh, 
the Henry's law constant for H2S is 0.1 moles per liter per uh, atmosphere. And uh, we know that the reactant is uh, like this, H2S in aqueous form, give us HS minus plus H plus, and uh, Ka is 10 minus 7. If you bubble pure H2S gas into the beaker of water, what is the concentration of HS minus and a pH at the pH of five? First in moles per liter, after that milligram per liter, and after that ppm. This is uh, in these uh, units. Now, uh, because pure H2S gas is bubbled in a beaker, the aqueous uh, H2S concentration is fixed and equals to call H multiplied by P H2S, the pressure of H2S, the pure gas. Um, so P H2S is uh, equal to one atmosphere. And we know that call A is equal to 10 minus seven. It's equal to uh, concentration of a HS minus multiplied by HS divided by H2S in aqueous. Uh, for H uh, plus is uh, 10 minus 5, as we know that the pH is equal to this. Uh, HS minus, um, we don't know the concentration, divided by H2S in aqueous form. Uh, it is 0.1 mole per liter uh, atmosphere, multi multiplied by one atmosphere, as we know it from here. So we can find the uh, concentration of HS. Uh, it's 0.001 mole per liter. Now we want to find the milligram per liter uh, in water. Um, we can uh, use mole per liter, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.001 mole per liter of HS. One mole of HS give us uh, 33.1 gram of uh, HS. And we changing, converting the gram to milligram, multiplying by 1,000. So it, is, it gives us 33 milligram HS minus per, divided by liter. And in water, as we know, milligram per liter is equal to ppm. So uh, 33.1 milligram per liter of HS multiplied by one liter of uh, water uh, give us one kilogram. So 33 ppm. What would be the pH if 10 minus two moles of hydrofluoric acid HF uh, we're added to one liter pure water. The pKa of uh, HF is 3.2. Well, in here, when uh, HF is added to water, it can either remain as the acid, so it remain as HF, or dissociated uh, to the base F minus. So in water, we have four unknown species, the H plus, OH minus, HF, and F minus. Water is not un, uh, unknown because we assume its activity is one. So in order to solve the problem, we required four independent equation to solve for the four unknowns. And here we have these four equations. Uh, the first one is one mass balance for water. Uh, sorry, uh, one mass balance for um, the acid. So we know that uh, 10 minus two moles per liter uh, equal to concentration of HF plus concentration of F minus. The next uh, equation that we use is two, uh, the equilibrium expression for water. We know that it is uh, the concentration of uh, H plus uh, multiplied by OH gives us 10 minus 14. The next one is uh, again for acid that we have uh, 10 minus uh, the, for the reaction. 10 minus uh, 3.2 Ka A is uh, equal to concentration of H plus multiplied by concentration of uh, F minus divided by HF. And one expression showing that charge neutrality, uh, neutrality is maintained in the solution. So, um, concentration of H plus, it, it should be low, uh, equal to concentration of adding concentration of OH, OH min minus and F minus for neutrality. Now we can solve the expression simultaneously or we can make an assumption uh, to reduce the number of unknowns. 
Now we use the assumptions. Assumption number one uh, gives us to reduce the mass balance expression. Assume that uh, the concentration of HF is greater than concentration of F minus. Uh, and it makes sense, we added a lot of relatively strong acids, so we can assume that the concentration of HF is really bigger and uh, the equi uh, equilibrium pH is less than pKa. So the mass balance uh, reduced for here, reduced to concentration HF is equal to 10 minus two molarity. The second assumption that we can use, uh, reduce the electron neutrality expression. Again, we assume that the concentration of F is greater than the concentration of OH minus. This should also make sense. We add a lot of uh, acids, so the pH should be below seven where the concentration of OH, it becomes very small. So the expression reduced to the, this expression reduced to concentration of H is equal to concentration of F minus. Now we substitute these two assumptions that we have to equilibrium expression in here. Uh, so 10 minus 3.2 is equal to H plus multiplied by concentration H plus. It's, it is uh, instead of F minus and divided by uh, concentration of HF. It's equal to 10 minus 2. So we can uh, find the concentration of uh, H plus in here. It's equal to 2.5 multiplied by 10 minus 3. So pH is equal to 2.5. She, uh, six. Uh, pH is logarithm uh, given minus log of this number. Now we should check our assumptions to make sure they are correct. First, we solve for the rest of the unknowns from equilibrium expression for HF. We can determine that F minus is uh, equal to 2.5 multiplied 10 minus 3. And from the equilibrium exp uh, expression for dissociation of water, uh, the concentration of OH is equal to 4 multiplied 10 minus 12. And from here, we can uh, see that the um, assumption that uh, we, are, we are using are valid. And uh, our, answer, our answer, answer is approximately correct. At the wastewater treatment plant FeCl3 is added to remove excess phosphate from the effluent. Uh, assume that the reactions that occur is like this. The equilibrium constant for the second reaction is 10 uh, power 26.4. What concentration of Fe3 plus would be needed to maintain the phosphate concentration below the limit of the one milligram phosphor per liter? Uh, we assume that all uh, phosphor as PO4 three minus. So we sh first we should uh, find the concentration of PO4. Uh, we know that uh, it shouldn't exceed of one milligram per phosphor per liter and converting the units to gram. And we, we know that 31 gram of phosphor is uh, one mole and one mole P gives us one mole PO4. 3 minus. So we have 3.2 multiply 10 minus 5 mole per liter of this concentration of PO4. Uh, and uh, again, we know that the Ka is equal to 10 point, uh, power 26.4. We know the concentration of this. We, don't, we know that it is the one. We don't want to exceed of this. And um, we, now we should find the Fe3 plus from here, so it is equal to 1.2 multiplied by 10 minus 22. Well, atrazine is an uh, herbicide widely used for corn and uh, is a common groundwater pollutant in the corn uh, producing regions of the United States. The, Yes, sure. Uh, do you want me to go back or no? Here. 
if you are ready, you can tell me and I go for next. You're welcome. Well, uh, the look of KOW for atrazine. Uh, actually, uh, I uh, send the uh, recording of this uh, class to Moodle, so you can uh, go and see that and uh, see what I explained and uh, you can pause it on each question. You can have it. I send the recording on the Moodle. You're welcome. Uh, atrazine is 2.65. Calculate the fraction of total atrazine that will be absorbed to the soil given that the soil has an organic carbon content of 2.5%. The bulk density of the soil is 1.25 gram per cubic, uh, cubic centimeter. This means that each cubic centimeter of uh, soil is uh, soil plus water contains 1.25 gram of soils, uh, soil particles. The porosity of the soil is 0.4. Well, from here, assume that the correlation of Baker et al. is valid for atrazine. So we can use this formula, log KOC, the organic carbon is equal to 0.903, um, log KOW plus 0 0.093.94. So uh, we have this uh, number. We insert it, plug it to the formula. We, uh, we can find the log, uh, log KOC, the logarithm of uh, organic carbon. It's equal to 2.49. Uh, so KOC is equal to 309 cubic centimeter per gram organic carbon. Now we have, uh, we want to find K is equal to KOC multiplied by FOC. Uh, we have FOC in here, 2.5% of uh, organic carbon content. So it is 0 0.025, it's equal to 7.73 cubic centimeter per gram soil. Now, Assume a total of one centimeter of uh, one cubic centimeter of soil. From the porosity, it, it will have 0.6 cubic centimeter of soil because we have 0.4 uh, porosity and 0.4 cubic uh, centimeter of void space. And uh, it's uh, assumed to fill with water. From the bulk density, we can determine the mass of soil is uh, 0.75 grams. We know that the uh, bulk density is 1.25 gram per cubic centimeter multiplied by 0.6 from here, the amount of the soil, uh, the mass of soil cubic centimeter gives us 0.75. Set up a mass balance on atrazine in water and sorb uh, to soil. Use the soil water partition coefficient to substitute for the sorb phase uh, concentration in terms of aqueous phase concentration. The total atrazine is equal to sorb atrazine uh, plus aqueous atrazine. Uh, for, so for here, for sorb atrazine, we have the uh, mass of uh, soil equal to 0.75 gram. We have the uh, ka here, the sea sorb is 7.73 cubic centimeter per gram of soil. And we, uh, we have the sea aqueous plus the void 0.4 cubic centimeter multiplied by C aqueous again. So we can uh, bring C aqueous out of the parentheses so, uh, and multiply by 5.8 cubic centimeter plus 0.4 cubic centimeter. In this problem, the mass of atrazine served in the uh, two soil is large relatively to the mass of uh, in the aqueous phase. As you can see, if we know the total amount of atrazine initially added to the system, we could solve the equilibrium aqueous 
phase uh, concentration, then use the soil water partition coefficient to determine the sorb uh, phase concentration. Well, uh, for the fraction of total adrazine uh, adsorbed to the soil, uh, if we assume that uh, we, we have one uh, in here, one cubic centimeter of soil, so it is a minus uh, 0.4 cubic centimeter of uh, devoid divided by this 0.4 cubic centimeter plus uh, 5.80 centimeter cubic centimeter multiplied by 100. So it is 94% of the soil. And the total uh, at present adsorbed. Mercury concentration in San Francisco Bay were measured to be eight nanogram in rainwater, 1.25 nanogram per liter uh, dissolved in the bay water and 250 nanogram per gram uh, dry way of uh, sediment. Using the information provided and assuming equilibrium, what is the sediment water partition coefficient for mercury in sediment? Units of cubic uh, centimeter per gram dry way of sediment. Uh, we use the equilibrium expression. It is equal to ka equal to ka Q divided by C. Q is 250 nanogram per gram divided by 1.25 nanogram per liter, so it is 200 liter per gram, uh, converting the units uh, liter to uh, cubic meter and cubic meter to centimeter, cubic centimeter, so we have two uh, multiply 10, five cubic centimeter per gram. The given, uh, given the following general reaction, a plus 2b plus 3c gives us p plus 4q. <coughs> Excuse me. Show how the change in concentration of c with times with time is related to the change of concentration of a, b, p, and q. So the change in concentration of c uh, with time gives us one uh, a need 3C. So one concentration of A need one divided by three, need 3C. So one third uh, is the relation. In here, 2B gives us a uh, need 3C. So 2B needs 3C. The so we, uh, the fraction two third is the relation. In other side, three C gives us one P. So minus one divided by three. And again, three C gives us four Q minus four divided by three. A first order reaction that results in destruction of a pollutant has a rate constant of 0.1 per day. How many days will it take for 90% of the chemical to be destroyed? How long it takes uh, for 99% and how long it takes for 99.9%? We use the first order reaction. It is equal, the formula is A multi, uh, equal to uh, initial A multiply E minus KT. For 90% uh, destroyed, uh, the, fir the, fir the first, uh, the initial A is one. So we want to uh, destroy 90%. So 10% uh, stays is 0.1. E minus uh, Ka is 0.1 per day multiplied by T. Solving this problem, we can find that T is equal to 23 days. Now for 99%, 99% uh, destroyed. So 0.1% initial concentration remains. So 0.1% is 
uh, O1 divided by one uh, in here, again, uh, use this formula to find the T, you can find out that it uh, needs 46 days to destroy 99% of that chemical. For C, again, use the same, but for 99.9%, .9%, it means 0.1% uh, of initial concentration remains. Sorry, in here, it's uh, not correct. It's 1% of initial. 0.1% uh, of initial concentration remains. So it is 0 0.001 divided by one. This is the cost, so it takes 69 days to destroy 99.9%. Well, on March 11, 2011, a massive earthquake and uh, tsunami triggered a major disaster at Japan's Fukushima, Fukushima nuclear plant. A plume extending to the northwest of the site deposited Significant amounts of iodine minus 133, cesium 134, cesium 137, up to 30 miles away. Iodine has an eight day half life, and cesium uh, 137 has a three year half life. Determine how long it will take 99% of iodine and 99% of cesium uh, to naturally decay. Well, uh, the half-life is given, so we have, um, we use this formula, T of half-life is equal to 0.693 divided by Ka. Uh, we want to find the Ka, uh, the constant, uh, constant uh, for iodine is 0 0.693 divided by half-life is eight days, so it gives us this number per day. And for cesium, it gives us for uh, three years, it's 0.231 for each year, multiplying by um, one year. each year gives us uh, have uh, 30, 365 days, so it gives us 6.3 multiply 10 minus four per day. So, Cesium will be limiting chemical to decay as it has much slow, slower rate constant. Use the first order rate equation. Again, in, in this uh, formula, we have the first, uh, concent first concentration multiplied by E minus K T gives us the uh, last concentration. So we know that uh, we want to have 99% uh, decay. So it is... Um, 0.01 of uh, the, the initial concentration. So we, uh, we can cancel out uh, initial concentration from both sides. So 0 0.01 divided by the uh, Ka uh, to find T, the time that uh, it's a uh, take for decay of 99% of this chemical, it gives us 20 years. So too many years need to, um, for the decay of cesium. You can do the same for the uh, iodine. So uh, doing the same calculation gives us 53 days for 99% of the iodine to decay. Any questions so far?